Ever since I heard his feature on the track Vengeance with Nenzo Curry, I've always kept an ear out to see what Zillikami would be up to next, like a couple of CD Morgue projects, both of which I thought were decent. A solo release definitely piqued my interest, but after listening to it, he's proving to be more and more of a one-trick pony to me. A lot of songs here utilize that trap metal blend, and they aren't bad, but they do grow very predictable, and it's quickly apparent how homogenous the album will be by the third song. There are some distinct tracks, like the one with Denzel, or the two more singing-oriented ones being Frost and Dead Girl where he was playing a bit more into some emo stylings. But most of my album experience here was getting deja vu of other tracks. It's only 30 minutes long but it can feel longer. I would have liked to have heard a little bit more ambition. <laughs> It's more mild high club for better or for worse. Their low-key psychedelic pop slash jazzy sounds are very akin to their past works, maintaining a consistency throughout their discography. Not a ton of surprises to be had, but that's not a bad thing here because I do think they show a much more energetic side of themselves on this album. There are a handful of moments where things definitely click, like the lovely jazz on the opener, the delectable dance grooves on Dionysian State and A New High, the uplifting saxophone on Waving, and the dreamy sweetness of Me, Myself, and Dollar Hell. There does remain some grievances I've had with their previous stuff like these shorter tracks serving more as background noise and filler although it's not as pronounced here so that's an improvement in my book. I liked it quite a bit. I'm interested to see where they go from here. This is a pretty solid post-rock release, which is on par for this band who have been at it for quite a while. A lot of songs on here are vast, rich with intricate details, and offer a good serving of dynamics. I especially really like the use of strings and piano, as I thought they were very instrumental to creating these feelings of spiritual euphoria, like the song Heaven in a Wildflower. They also really shine during the buildup of Hold Infinity in the palm of your hand before releasing that pent-up beauty into a crashing cacophony of guitars. Not to mention they sound absolutely absolutely stunning on the gorgeous closer as well. There are spots where the compositions and arrangements just aren't all that intriguing and can lead to moments of unnecessary bloat in my opinion, but I liked it overall. Definitely the most abstract album I've listened to all week. The album is filled with a lot of avant-garde sounds of psychedelic jazz, cloud rap, minimal primal percussion, and temporal enchanting swirls of which like vocals as well. The feature list is pretty big with contributions from Elucid, Pink Seifu, and a lot more. I think this is More Mother's most accessible record to date, but she doesn't compromise her edge at all here. Lyrically and stylistically, there is a ton of material relating to black magic, black liberation, scathing critiques of capitalism as well as addressing the energies of nature and the world and how just time itself is merely a toy in the grand scheme of things. There's a lot to unpack here for sure. I have listened to the album twice and I still feel like there's a lot more I can go back and kind of reveal for myself. But while I appreciate just how conceptually out there it is musically, it can leave a lot to be desired at times. Tracks will end abruptly refusing to further expand on their ideas. Some songs can feel like a slog to get through because of how loosely they are structured. And some of the flows and singing just aren't that great in my opinion either. Definitely not for everyone, but I, I enjoyed it. This is a desolate and emotional hyperpop album, one of a few that I have heard this year. It is very personal, diving very deeply into emotional and traumatic territory. The fusions of hyperpop, hip-hop, lo-fi, emo, and indie all come together in extreme fashion. The production is really creative and frantically textured. It's really crazy to think that a 16-year-old produced this. Parker herself displays a ton of range vocally, be it when she sings or raps, and the way she manipulates her vocals is highly impressive. The first half of the album is where it fires on all cylinders with songs that are well crafted and sonically coherent. The second half does struggle as the ideas and execution feel unfinished and underdeveloped. I do think it finishes off strong but there is a very noticeable drop off in the middle. Overall it is rough around the edges but it is a fascinating listen nonetheless. <laughs> Thank you.
first time hearing a Jordan Rakai, uh, Rakai album. I hope I'm pronouncing the last name correctly. And I have to say, I really, really liked it. The production is very pretty and laced with elements of beauty. I think the performances Jordan gives are fantastic. The vocals are great. The melodies are memorable. And a good chunk of the songs can be quite cathartic with their grand send off like Cloud and Brace. Not to mention the delectable synth pop of Illusions and the indie tronica of Send Off. There is a ton of variety to be had on this. Jordan's music rings to me very similar of James Blake. Really the only noticeable issue I had with the album was that the second half of it has songs that just don't quite reach a fulfilling conclusion the way you would hope for them to get to considering their direction. But regardless, I highly recommend this one. Really enjoyed my time with this new ADA Victoria album. I love how immersive the darker sonic rendition of country blues is, resulting in songs that absolutely swallow you in its soundscape from curling drums to moody guitars and even banjos. The production overall on the album is pretty great. Uh, ADA herself provides some really thrilling vocal performances as she tells wistful stories of loss, love, and revenge. Like on the song Jewel Was Born to Die, Troubled Mind, and the lusciously grim Please Come Down. There are also some sweet ballads thrown into the mix like south for the winter to give this album more dimensions to it some songs definitely pale in comparison to others due to some standard song structures and instrumentals but for the most part it's a really good album Last year's album from Clarence Clarity was a change of pace for him, treading heavily into the ambient side of things, and while I thought the album was decent, I was hoping that his next project would be more of his forward-thinking experimental electropop, and this EP delivered. Sublord is wild as hell with its spontaneous flashes of bass and sound. Obsessed is super earwormy, the hook is something you would hear from like a early 2000s R&B song. False Positive is frenetic, undergoing so many shifts in sound and direction that is kept together by how seamless the transitions are and i love the moody it is happening again with twist which has a vocal honking lead sample before concluding with an explosive finish yeah i i love this ep i can't wait to hear more <laughs> There was a lot of clamor for this album, seemingly out of nowhere. I saw it get glowing reviews at the wazoo and even saw comments about it on a Urinating Tree video, which is a highly dedicated sports channel. I gave the album a listen and I can understand the hype it was getting because I do think it's a very exhilarating metal record with ample amount of variety, with sounds of metalcore, post-metal, and alternative metal. You get a lot of songs with crushing and groovy riffs, cybernetic tinges of industrial electronics sprinkled in to give the music a more future feel and the lead vocalist Courtney has range initially I thought this album was alternating between a female and male vocalist in between songs but I came to found out it's all her and it is astounding to hear her transition from gentle and soul cleansing singing like on the title track to her screaming her brains out in a completely different unrecognizable tone of voice like on the song holy roller I do think as the album goes on though there are gonna be some pockets where you're gonna have musical deja vu but nonetheless this is a very fun diverse and accessible metal album I Highly recommend and I really can't wait to hear what they have next. When I saw that Sufjan was doing a full-length album with Angelo de Augustine, I was curious to see how it would play out because to my ears they both sound almost the exact same. And I'm not talking about their sound or either one being generic clones of each other. I am talking about their musical methodology and their vocal identities being near carbon copies of one another. If you drafted me as a witness to a police precinct and asked me to identify a culprit based off their voices alone and these two are the suspects, that crime would never be solved. This album expectedly has a lot of beautiful folk tunes and interesting stories of faith and philosophy to tell and the two harmonize together in fantastic fashion creating some truly gorgeous and cinematic moments it makes you forget how indistinguishable the two are however as the album goes on the folksy sound starts to wear thin because of how little else there is in terms of instrumental variety the last three songs do utilize some strings and horns but it feels too little too late with the talent pulled here the album definitely had room for risk and ambition but overall, I thought it was a pretty solid listen. <laughs> ah. 
After a little over two years of delving into a crushingly catchy new metal sound, Flux sees Poppy adding some more artillery to her arsenal with an emphasis on alt rock, power pop, and punk rock. That crushing new metal sound does appear in pockets on the album, but more so as a method of repressing anger and frustration. No longer performing juxtaposing genres to draw attention to herself, she's just focused on making a more direct and reflective experience, and I think that this is her best album yet. Almost every song comes rich with pummeling drums, discordant gliding riffs, and very memorable vocal leads as well. I also like all the song topics that she screams and sings passionately about, like on Bloom and the emotionally potent closer that comes with a roaring finish following such a despondent opening and middle section. Artistically speaking, Flux is incredibly concise, creative, and tremendously well executed because I don't think there is a single wasted second on the album, and I have not been able to stop listening to it. It's my favorite album of the week and definitely one of my favorites of the year. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down below and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.